Hey you, thank you so much for listening. No matter when you are listening, no matter where you are, get comfortable. Get yourself a cup of tea, a glass, or an entire bottle of wine. Maybe smoke a blunt, get under a blanket, grab yourself some popcorn, and enjoy this week's episode of The Slut Show with Elon Moore. Ladies, gentlemen, non-binary beans, and any and everyone in between, welcome. My name is Ellen Moore, and this is a live slut show, but it is the big improvisation show. Let me tell you why. Due to the current situation in regards to COVID-19, instead of recording on location here in the slut show studio in Amsterdam, this episode is an Instagram live stream. Follow at the slut show with Ellen Moore on Instagram to never miss out on any updates. And without further ado, enjoy this week's episode. I have always had this nightmare scenario in my mind of my guest canceling two minutes before going live and that is unfortunately what happened today so i'm gonna be drinking a cocktail while i'm gonna improv improvise my ass out of this whole thing um so welcome to i don't know what's next <laughs> okay so i called up my friend liza from sex talk saturdays a um lovely talk show kind of formula um, of interviewing people about all kinds of different things, sex related, um, life related. My savior angel. Hello, honey. Let us uh, start in the leader and see if that gives us some um, inspiration. Here we go. The Slut Show with Ellen Moore, the podcast slash talk show about shit you and I have to deal with on a daily basis about feminism, insecurities, feeling like a bomb ass bitch, and obviously about loads of sex. Enjoy your weekly dose of empowerment. What's the most empowering thing you did lately? Oh my god, um... <laughs> you look fabulous. Thank you! It's so funny because I told you that I was gonna get ready to hop on the live and I feel like I, I put on less clothes than I had on before. <laughs> Love it. Um, empowering thing I've done, I have really been taking a lot of time to myself to... Good. Get ready for this art show, honey. Tell us all about that. Oh my God. I know, I sat and I like put all my canvases behind me. I love it. Art so art. nice. Um, my art show is in September, so I've got some time, like four months. I think everybody else has time. The four months for me are gonna be busy as fuck, so. Of course. Um, it's gonna be good though, it's my first one. Awesome. What, where are you gonna be doing it? How did this all, get started um i'm doing it here where i live um so my mom does like the airbnb thing and i live in one of the apartments in this duplex and outside she's built this beautiful oasis um and while i was looking for venues i was like oh my god what the fuck like i, I have to try to book it now in advance right and i was standing outside while i was saying this and i just looked around and i was like oh my god mom please <laughs> So I love that. It's really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. And are you going to be exposing art that you are creating now or that you've created before? Um, it's, I have two collections that I'm putting out. Um, I have some on these gallery wrapped canvases that I like post mm -hmm. piece by piece when I like put them up. Nice. Um, but then I have a collection of wooden canvases that I'm keeping like hush hush until the show. Mm hmm. So it'll be 20 pieces of art. And um, what is the inspiration behind it? So it's called the Art Imitates Life Showcase. Cool, um, That's that sounds like you made it up high, but interesting. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, I'm a storyteller. Um, it's so right. more than one. I have a sex talk show and shit. I love to tell stories. So um, I'm putting out a lot of stories on these canvases. Uh, some of them, I mean, I could go and tell people what these stories are for me, but I'm really excited to see people kind of just come out and see what stories come out for them. Right. I think that we're all mirrors for each other. And totally. um, it's been it's been a rough couple of years. And so I'm telling some real stories. And um, I just want people to walk in knowing that, like, they're not the only ones that have had a hard time. They're not the only ones that feel like their life might be under a microscope. They're not the only ones that have hard times at home with people that they really love and care about. I want them to like come here and reflect and relate and just like be. Right. Together, you know? To not feel alone for a little bit. Yeah, fuck yeah. 
Yeah. I feel like Corona made everyone spend so much more time with themselves. And I feel like you could have kind of gone either way. Either you embraced that time with yourself and you looked in the mirror and you did the hard work and you dug deep or you could have gone the other way and being like, no, I don't want this. And constantly being on the phone with people um, just to have like that sense of not being alone. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's been very useful for many of us. Yes, it has. I'm thankful for it. I'm one of those people that normally likes to be with someone all the time. I have a very codependent nature. I love people. Right. Um, but I, I really have been enjoying my solidarity lately. Like, there are some moments where, like, I have to practice. Like, be like, no, bitch. Like, don't call somebody. Like, just sit with yourself. Right. And then there are moments where I'm like, I love spending time with myself. I'm so fun. <laughs> you know? Right. Well, uh, what what are you guys go-to things to do for... Oh, what are you go-to things for... So okay, sorry. My brain is not really working right now. <laughs> Okay, we'll give you some time, honey. What is your go-to thing? I feel like I have a couple. It depends on my mood. I just moved to a new place and I have a bathtub. I have a bathtub. Yes. Oh, my God. And so I, I'm so loving that so much. Yeah. Uh, it's the bathtub. 100%. So good. So good for your nervous system. So good. For there is actual health benefits to taking baths. I'm telling you. I began looking into it. And so I have this um, heater that can go up to like 40-ish degrees. So technically, I also have a sauna. Yeah, you do, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good God. Uh, yeah. What is your go-to self-care thing? Ooh, go-to self-care thing. Um, eating some really delicious food. Food is so sexual. Uh, <laughs> masturbation. Oh, yeah, totally. Oh, <laughs> totally. I definitely, Jess, who was that was asking? Jess, I like to fuck myself. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I like to do. That's my go-to thing for self-care, honey. Don't we all? I, I called, like, I called, like, okay, so when, I, when the, the guest who was supposed to be on the live show today got canceled, I called um, Jessica, the, uh, who just asked the question. Um, yes, I love that even more. Jessica, that's I love right. That. And I was like, girl, can you? And she's like, ah. I'm like, you're going to have to ask questions and tune in. <laughs> but I'm very happy that she's here and doing it. And you see the same. She is actually, I'm so excited for that. She's going to be on the next studio season. Yes. Okay. The shyness must go away. Yes, girl. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna make sure I watch. Okay. It's gonna be good. This girl's yeah. got some kinky stories up her sleeve. I love it. <laughs> I follow as soon as I get off this live. <laughs> <laughs> Adore it. I usually look at you know these these things to to you know and no questions, but I don't have any. So we're gonna just <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> um. Let's. You have a beer. I have a cocktail. Let's play a game of Never Have I Ever. Oh my god, yes! Hit it. Could you have rid of threesome? <laughs> I haven't. How was that? Um, it was... Okay, let me see how many... <laughs> I threesome, like, four different occasions, and two out of the four were good. Okay. Yeah, it was because I... The two other times that I did it, I did it with people that I trusted. Nice. Um, because I was, like, moving from monogamy to non-monogamy. I knew that I was, like, open and okay with certain things, but I also knew that I still would get, like, jealous and possessive and shit. Okay. Um, so, I don't know. With those other two times, it's crazy how far trust will go. I didn't realize how strong that is in a lot of relationships until I had those threesomes. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so okay with this. This is fucking weird. Why? Because I trust you. Like in my insecurities, I just feel like no one was like out to get me, you know? That is great. Right? Yeah, totally. I feel like that is also the reason why I haven't. I've gotten offers more than once. I've, when I look, but there's, there's one that I'm like, I would, I would have liked to know how that would have went. Um, but also looking back now, I don't think the moment was right. And the, okay. the people just, 
I care for them, but I don't want to, like, I don't want to break up a relationship. I don't want to have that. Some people think that they're, like, ready to have a threesome until it happens. And then a lot of relationships go to shit because there's a lack of communication. There's a lack of understanding. There's a lack of, like, empathy and compassion. Like, if somebody agrees to have a threesome, right, and then all of a sudden they have an issue with you touching their boyfriend, girlfriend, or whatever, they have no freedom to even, like, feel these emotions sometimes or like speak on it because it'll be like well you agreed to this well yeah I did but I'm still having an issue like you have to right. be open and understanding like these things are very natural it's not easy for everyone you might have the curiosity but I think going into it there's a lot more work than people you know. I'm not there communication wise I'm gonna but I'm not there right now and I feel like I'm learning. A, I've learned so much with all the time I've spent with myself. I think I've spent more time with myself over this whole quarantine since Corona started than I've spent in my entire life. Yeah. I've been looking in the mirror quite literally sometimes that I would look in the mirror and I would have this like moment of disassociation looking and being like, whoa, that that's me. And then that coming together like those moments have been so emotional and it sounds weird to look in the mirror and then end up crying but it's been so healing to have that conversation with yourself not so much wandering off but having an actual dialogue with your true inner self absolutely there are a lot of things um that can like distract you from seeing those things in yourself like you can bury yourself underneath other people and other people's situations but when 100%. it's just you and you, I think it's good that you can have those moments and look in the mirror and be like, oh, shit, like, this hurts. Oh, shit, I didn't see this. Before. Right. You totally. Know? I really, for the first time now, when I'm alone with myself, I am just, I am. I'm just being. I'm not searching for validation somewhere else. I Sometimes I find myself being on my phone just scrolling, 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 and not having anything, you know, Doing that, falling back into that pattern. Hi, Clara. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's other moments when I'm like, it's good. I'm just, I am. Yeah, absolutely. Damn, girl. Okay. We're going deep. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Cheers, boo. That was good. Cheers. So for those who just tuned in, we're doing a little round of Never Have I Ever. So if you have questions, um, oof. Yeska, girlfriend, you got good ones. I know, what, right? What is your top three bucket lists? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I actually so have what? a bucket list. Do you have a bucket list? Should I go get it? You know, why Why the fuck not? I can yes, go get it. I, I'm, you know, this is the, the big improvisation slut show with Alan Moore. Yeah, I'm going to walk like this because I don't want people to somehow find out where I live. So I'm going <laughs> to walk backwards. All right, Should I go. flash everyone? Then they won't pay attention. Um, <laughs> we're going into... There might be some sex toys in the background because this is my... Woo! Yes! Okay. Here we go. This is my... I know it's in here. Um, I'm flipped upside down for a sec. I'm sorry about that. Trippy. Here we go. Ooh! Oh, good God. And the first thing you're going to do after being vaccinated, well... Have sex. I've been doing some of that, I guess. <sighs> I'm so jealous of that. It's been a couple of weeks, but I have friends. <laughs> you have friends. <laughs> <laughs> friends. I have friends, too, but I haven't had... Show the closet I freaking built for you. She actually built me, like, the walking closet of my dreams. Jessica was the one that did this? She is the one who did that. She's she she's good at everything. It's so fucking annoying. She's, <laughs> name something she's good at it. I haven't looked at it in forever. Oh, there's a lot of things on here. I'm not gonna be naming them all. It's not like the first is the one that I wanna do the like the most, but um all right, so jumping from a plane is one on there um having a threesome is one on there there is a lot of drugs that i wanted to try i've <laughs> tried quite quite some of them um publish a book make a living doing what makes me happy so there's a lot of those 
very deep ones in there. And then there's things like get a MacBook. <laughs> <laughs> I That's started this list when I was 16. Fair enough, Fair enough right? Uh, oh I got the MacBook. God. Shouldn't have gotten it. Waste of fucking money, but okay. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, definitely doing something that makes you happy. That's definitely on my list. And I want to get out of the country. I've been to Haiti, but I want to nice. go somewhere else outside of the country. Come to Amsterdam. Yeah, that's on the list. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. Well, Dan, you have my blessing on the threesome. I hope it goes well. I hope you meet people that you can like connect with and trust. Sure. That's going to happen. Name a number between 1 and 95 and I will read out loud what, what's, what the bucket list says. 47. 47. There you go. Maybe I'm going to not read it out loud, but you know. <laughs> um, throw a party till the sun comes up and that's actually crossed off. So... Good job. Yeah, I've done that. I live in South Florida. Right, right. Hey, they're participating. Great. 24. Yes, okay. 24, yes. I love this. Um, so the party till the sun comes up story is actually quite fun. So when I turned 21 last year, um, I wanted to throw this huge fucking party, but obviously Corona was already happening. So you know, I didn't really know how to how to do it. And then I just got a lot of people to this open air place really near to my my previous apartment. And we could maintain one and a half meter distance. I'm not saying if that happened or not, but technically it could have happened. Um, and it was just basically one big drugs dream. And it was great. Oh I mean, God. And you got, you did all of this. You brought all of those people to that one space. It was like I tried to dress it up like a fairy tale. There were like lights and trees, and there was like a lot of balloons and a lot of you know drug related things, a lot of glitter, a lot of flashing lights. And so I was wearing these glitter pants that people would just be like, "Where's Ellen? Wait, look at the pants. Oh, there she is." <laughs> Fuck yeah, I love that. Great. I would have totally taken some shrooms and went. That's what I want people to do. Like, take some shrooms and come to my art show. It would be amazing. <laughs> and name a kind of drugs it was there. Drugs are a good thing. Don't do them, though, if you're not mentally stable. And don't do drugs, kids. 24. <laughs> um, oh, Jesus. This is actually a pretty toxic one. Um, I, I was super anorexic. So that's a huge trigger warning for people. So it says, eat everything I want for a day. And bitch, I've been doing that and I've been loving it. Have and the peach. <laughs> Sorry. Have you been loving it? I've been loving it. It's been great. Good. Yeah. Mm. And the peach tree. Is that at the party? Yep. Yeah. I actually created a kind of toilet um, under like this huge tree that had like you know, at least till the floor, so you, you couldn't see it. So we had a guy pee tree, which was like against, you know, a tree, go stand up, pee. You know, you guys can do that. And then we had the pee tree, which the, there was there was toilet paper rolls. There was, yeah, it was proper. It was decent. I made a pee tree. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I got to come to one of those parties. I'm seriously going to come out to Amsterdam. I just, you know. You're invited, 100%. Ooh. If you if you make it somehow on the seventh of August, you're more than invited to my birthday party. Holy shit! I'm writing that down. That would be awesome. Say Amanda with you. <laughs> yes, Amanda. If Amanda knew that I was going there, she would definitely be right. There. <laughs> she was ready to think about on your date, your Amsterdam date. Excited for that. What is yeah. something that is on your bucket list? Bucket list. What do I want to do? I really want to have a mini farm. I Ooh. want a mini farm of my own before I die. I want like some chickens and some goats and like plants everywhere. Nice. I want to be close ish to a city, but I still want like that farm life. Nice. Maybe I could just like have like a whole poly community living in this one area all love on each other and if there's a zombie apocalypse we can all protect each other 
<laughs> this is literally, I would love to, um, like, as soon as I'm rich, stop working and go live in the south of Italy and mm. own, a, own a pizza place and eat gelato all fucking day and just get fat laying on the beach having sex. How great would that be? That sounds fantastic. Right. I'm doing that. I don't know when, but it's going to happen. I'm, I'm going to vibe with you, too, while you're laying out on the beach. Hell, yeah. Lotto. Hell, yeah, we're doing this thing. I've been just thinking, I want to channel my lesbian side more. I want to start dating women, like, seriously, not like, you know, getting, getting coffee with people who end up being your friends. No, I want to seriously date women. Um, <laughs> so funny. That's so true. It's fucking annoying. <laughs> but seriously, Lesbians don't take me seriously as a person who would like to date women because I look straight. I've been told by so many fucking friends that I look straight. So I was like, okay, I'm going to get this app yeah. that is only lesbians. So, okay. or well, people who, women who like women uh, and non-binary people. And How so I, so far? the women are so hot. They are so hot. There are so many hot women in Amsterdam. Oh my God. Are you messaging? Are you talking to them? Or are we just- I am. Swiping? No, no, no. I, I'm talking. Wow. I'm a conversation starter. The second I get a match, I send a message because I, otherwise it's not going to happen. You know, yes. if you don't, don't want to talk to me, we're not going to talk. But if you want to talk to me, let's talk. Oh, we're talking. Yeah. Right. I love that. <laughs> I love that. That's how our friendship is like building. I feel like we just, we're chatty. We talk. I love that. We're just, because of the time, time difference, I sent you an audio and then like 24-ish hours later, I get a reply. So that, that keeps going, which is very nice. I like it. Yeah, it's great. I have an issue with women as well. It's kind of frustrating. I mean, for the most part, no. I make connections very easily, but I do have an issue sometimes in the lesbian community. Um, because I'm bisexual. I identify bisexual, but really my preference is women. Um, and I think for pe most people that know me, they know that, but I still very much have love for men. And right. um, I even like lately on sex talk, like I haven't really been posting much about like dick, any like penis memes or anything like that because I have like some interests, right? Right. And lesbians. And I'm like, if I post about dick they're not gonna want to walk in my direction because they're gonna be like oh she's eventually gonna leave me for a man or oh you know whatever the insecurities are in the lesbian in the community that makes it hard for straight and bisexual well straight what they think is seemingly straight bisexual women i told a friend of mine who was a lesbian recently that um maybe it would be better for her to start dating women staying away from bisexual people because of you know that and then I was like, why did I say this? I know, I know. It's a shitty thing to say, but like, there is a lot of truth to that. It, it's so annoying. It's annoying. Like, the minute that, you know, lesbians find out that, you know, women that they're interested in are also interested in men, it's a deal breaker for them for so many reasons. I've been asking a lot of lesbian women, like, what are your reasons? Like, what turns you off? And there are a lot of different things, sometimes with sex, um, for health reasons, they think that they'll look at st certain st uh, statistics um, when it comes to men versus yeah. women, uh, how many STDs and whatever else men have versus women. And the, you know, numbers are higher for men because it's more socially acceptable for them to have sex, unprotected sex, you know, whatever. So the numbers are higher. So they're like, well, I just don't want to take my chances. I still think it's bullshit, but... <laughs> I also look at them and I'm like, well, the numbers don't lie. I guess I fucking get it. I don't know. It's fucking annoying. <laughs> but I even annoy myself with the crave for dick. I'm like... Wait, say that again? I annoy myself with the crave for dick. Because then I f I'm like, you know, I'm horny for some reason and I'm thinking of dick and I'm like, for fuck's sake, just why does it have to be a dick? Why can't you just... And then I end up masturbating to lesbian porn and I'm like, why I, I feel like I have this, I, I began sex and stuff fearing dick. And now I'm at a point where I'm like, I'm fearing puss. Okay. I feel like this is a process and eventually I will 
love humans. But <laughs> okay, okay, I feel I feel the process. I like where it's going though. Right, right. What are some taboos we should be talking about? Some taboos we should be talking about. Um, <laughs> abortion. We're talking about that abortions for sure. I'm def I'm on it. I want to talk about abortion. I want to talk about sexual assault. I want to talk about um, STDs and STIs and um, choosing future or current partners that have STDs and STIs, how you, how couples are going about that, right. not their partners, because I have some friends and family that have dated people with STDs and they found a way to go around it without uh, making them feel like they're a fucking leper. Yeah. Right. How, um, have, have you ever had an STD? Uh, no. I know. I had to really th think about that. I'm like, have I? No. Have you ever had an STI? Um, a yeast infection and a UTI. Um, I don't know. If urine to, to, to. Urinary tract infection and yeast infection. Is, is that the same thing as a bladder infection? Yes. I, I mean, yes. I mean, it's hey, we, we get a translation right? here. We have Somebody a in the comments answer, because I believe that a urinary tract infection is the same. It's your urinary tract. It connects to your bladder. I just got the Dutch word basil staking. It is. Well, in okay. that case. <sighs> this is why we need to talk about it. <laughs> I have had 20 fucking bladder infections. I have a serious issue with my bladder and this is this is generational like it's you can oh, you're prone to them. Oh my god. But it's not fucking funny. I there was this once the summer of 2017 I had eight bladder infections in a row. They're the worst. The last it's one that I had was the worst. I like felt it in my kidneys. It was the worst. Ugh. Damn, I hate that. I had um, a coworker that I used to work with and she had that issue. Like she was just prone to them. So like every single time that she had sex with her boyfriend, he would get a UTI afterwards and she was just trying to figure out ways to minimize that. And she was like, I even pee every time after sex and she'll still get them. So I run to about. the toilet after sex. I run, I run after masturbating. No matter how drunk I am, I run. Fuck, okay, you get them things. That's annoying. I'm sorry. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> what does your diet look like? <sighs> no, we're not going there. I want this to be a very safe space for everyone. Also, people who struggle with eating uh, disorders. And we're not going there. I'm not saying shit about my diet. Because it's... <laughs> I was working at Chili's. And um, one of my managers was having an affair with one of my coworkers. And we all closed like the same night and <laughs> they invited me to hang out with them after work. My threesome was like a first time having sex with a woman. Oh. Um, yeah. He didn't really join. So I feel like it was more of like a twosome and he watched. Like we went back to his house. Mm -hmm. I was smoking his bong in his room and then him and Carmen started making out. And then, like, I was just, like, smoking the bong, like, kind of just watching. <laughs> you know? Like, well, what the fuck is happening? And then she, like, called me over there. And I was like, okay. You know? And we started messing around. Was, I never talked about having sex with a woman, but I guess I just knew what to do. And he watched, and that was it. Following after that, like, when I wanted to, like, date women, I was really scared because I was like, I only had this one sexual experience with a woman. Right. And then I actually like really liked this girl that was my first girlfriend. And I had like straight friends that like to get fucked up and fucked up and like make out with everyone. So right. like, when we were just drinking and stuff. I was just like, hey, like you guys, I really like this girl. And I don't really I feel like I don't really know what I'm doing. Like, will you have sex with me? So that I know how to like have sex with a girl. And they agreed to it. Really? Yeah, it was my friend Samara and her best friend and like we would get drunk and have sex sometimes just so I can like practice like touching a woman and they let me. Oh my god, that is wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I could see myself doing that because honestly, when, <laughs> when I knew like that a first time of sex was coming, I was like, should I buy a dildo in practice? Yeah. I, I feel like, I feel like that's another one of those taboos that need talking about being insecure about what, not knowing what you're doing in bed. Yeah, that should be okay. I feel like people are always so focused on wanting to be good in bed and, and not, they're not okay with just saying like, I don't know what I don't know. You know, right. everyone is so different. I feel like I've had these sexual experiences with people where it's like, oh, the sex was so passionate and so amazing. I've had people give me praise like, oh my God, you're so good in bed. But that right. doesn't mean anything from this person to the next. You right. Know? Yeah, totally. I feel like there's a lot of men who are like, some woman at some point told me I was good in bed and now I am never going to practice anything again because I am good in bed. Oh, they frustrate so much. These young men frustrate me so much. Yeah. So, talking sex toys, what is your favorite sex toy? I feel like with sex toys, I was always like really focused on um, penetration, like dildos and mm. stuff. But I'm starting to really get into um, like m the toys that focus more on like the clitoral sensations. Right. There's like this butterfly toy, and it sits like right on top of your clit. It kind of like grabs on <laughs> your vulva, and it just like vibrates, so it's like right on your clit. Oh, nice! I've never heard of this. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll send you the link. <laughs> Do so for sure. <laughs> The Slut Show is currently looking for sponsors, as a matter of fact, if anyone yes. is tuning in. Sponsor us. Um, yes. we, are, we are desperately looking at this very moment. Um, okay, good. Yeah, it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So what sex toys are you into right now? Everything. Um, but <laughs> but uh. then, uh, not, not every. I'm not into anal play, um, so no... No butt related things. It's just not my jam. I have, I've got irritable bowel syndrome. Just don't even go there. You know, a little rimming here and there. Okay, after I took a very long fucking bath. But <laughs> okay, all right, fair enough. I, yeah. I get into more anal play. It's been the little bit I've been doing has been fun. I kind of want to okay. explore a little more. What, what, because, <laughs> so, <laughs> so a partner of mine, um, with whom I was for a longer time, he told me, um, I think you would like it. And so I asked him why. And so <laughs> like, I know that the slut show in general is usually like too much information, but now we're hitting a new level. Uh, and so he told me because you like shitting. <laughs> and so I told him, I like the feeling of being empty. And so he was like, oh, then maybe, maybe you won't. <laughs> so he wanted to maybe fuck you in the ass to help with shitting? <laughs> Is that where he no, 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 no. Oh. No, he, he, he thought he was being a good person by paying attention to the fact that I say that I like taking a dump. But then I, you know, if you... <laughs> <laughs> If you got irritable bowel syndrome and shit comes out, you're happy, okay? Um, I, mean, I enjoy a good shit, so I get Right. It. Doesn't everybody enjoy a good shit? If they should. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, yeah. But if, for you, it's different. You like anal play. Let's talk about that. I like, anal, I like anal sex if it is done right. I honestly can't. I don't know. People are so, like, focused on, like, big dicks and huge dicks. Like, if you have, like, the perfect size penis, then I'm down for it. I'll throw it back on, on that dick. But, like, too much is too much. If it's done right, then fine. I feel like I've had anal sex with two guys that they, they did it right. They made sure it was lubed up. They eased their way into it. And they hit that prostate, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Anouk, she once said in an interview something along the lines of, if I don't feel that pain, I don't want it. And she would go up to guys before having sex with them and be like, how long is it? Oh. <laughs> and, then she, and then in the interview, she said, um, 
Yeah, but they always measure it too short because you got to measure from the... <laughs> and so she described how to measure the dick properly. She, like, from here to the... <laughs> um, She's about that. She needs that length. I ain't mad at you, honey. It's just not funny. <laughs> I feel like it's so personal per person. I feel like some okay. some people are into long dicks. Other people are into fat dicks. Other people are into tiny ones. Yeah. 13 is try oh. ecstasy. Which was great. Which I uh, don't do drugs, kids, but I totally recommend it. Um, I mean, I really feel like the use of MDMA and ecstasy. I really don't want to get banned from Instagram, but I also do want to tell people that this, like having a beer does not like, you, you cannot compare alcohol to drugs because it just does something completely different. And I feel like, and this is also why they are um, microdosing MDMA for like ther therapy, because this really can change your view on certain things. And I feel like my personal experience with ecstasy, literally, I think that was what made my made it click inside of my head. I was in an anorexia therapy, the therapy, therapy, and so I really feel like that trip made it click. And being like, life is way too damn short. To worry about wearing, weighing your damn cornflakes. Yeah. So I feel like that can really, really be a good experience. Yeah, agreed. I like those come to Jesus moments that you have with psychedelics. Right, exactly. I love this. I didn't know we could go live with three people. We are here, honey. We are here. Hi, Ivana. We made it. Oh my God, I love you. Hi. I want to ask you, because you're the lesbian of the group, because we were just talking about how uh, we both, Ellen and I, have issues with dating lesbian women because most of them know that we are interested in men. So for you, right. do right. you, do, could you give some understanding from your perspective, if you could speak for other lesbians, like why this is a thing or is it an issue for you? Like, do you normally feel some type of way if you're talking to a woman that's bisexual or just came into their sexuality. Let's say they've been saying they've been hetero for years and all of a sudden they're like, oh my God, I like women. Like, I think that that kind of shit only really disrupts your insecurities. Um, my first girlfriend was bisexual. Um, it didn't bother me. It taught me a lot, you know, as far as like, she was bisexual, but she was completely faithful to me. We never had an issue. You know what I'm saying? I just, you know, when there was a cute guy, I knew she was checking him out, but she had eyeballs and she was bisexual. Like I wasn't going to be mad at her for that, you know? Yeah, okay. um, but I think it's more a matter of like insecurities, you know, and I've never really felt insecure in myself or what I bring to the table in any ways. So I think that's like, I can't speak for all lesbians, but I can speak for myself and I'm not worried about that shit. <laughs> Good to know. I'm not worried about that shit, Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear God. <laughs> Don't make her nervous now, girl. She's been doing good. Never have I ever had sex in a park. I have actually. Fun fact. So, um... <laughs> drink <laughs> drink first um so i actually oh dear god i don't know how this was how did this happen but it happened so oh my god. um i was traveling i was abroad and uh so i met this person and it really clicked and uh you know we were vibing and so we decided to go to a club, get drunk, you know, um, go dance and have sex. But after like tw 20 minutes in the club, we were like, you know, we are, why are we here? We let's, let's go home. Um, and so on the way home, I was like, we should go swimming. I was drunk. Out obliterated. Of mind. obliterated. <laughs> right. And so we walked like in direction of the sea. And so, um, we came across this park and, um, they were like, this is a really nice park. You want to take a look inside. And so we tried to open the, like the gate, but we couldn't. Um, and so the fence was like two meters high and we were like, let's climb over. <laughs> and 
said, drunk, this sounds like a good idea right now. And so we did. <laughs> and so we ended up like in that park having sex. And then um, we, what we didn't know was that it was some fucking royal palace kind of park. And there was literal like police guarding the whole damn thing. And so we were laying there him inside of me like oh my god there was a dog barking and we were like fuck this is not a good scenario to get caught oh my god that is fucking epic oh my god and we got away with it and so we started running me like still pulling up my pants him him throwing my shoes like to me and oh my god it was just fuck the shoes she put the shoes from the clothes. Let's just get our asses out of here. You had the royal guard after your ass. <laughs> but the sex was great. So, I mean, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. <laughs> and it makes up for a good story now. So, hell yeah. Sex outside always, like, it's always, like, you know, so good outside, you know? It's, like, it so taboo little... or something, you know? You're right. like, what? what's the, yeah. what, the craziest place you've had sex? Damn. Uh, I had sex in a st- in a storage like a you know like those um storage units where you like put your apartment shit and stuff. Right. I had sex a few times in there. I used to date a girl who uh like her like they lived in like the there's like a manager that takes care of that. There's a there's somebody living in that property at all times. Um, so we would have sex all over that place in the elevator and the fucking storage place and, and the loading nice. dock, wherever there wasn't a camera, we was fucking. <laughs> That's nice. I had yeah, sex fun. on top of my boss's desk and then later I realized there were cameras all over. Oh shit. I don't know if I've ever been caught on camera, but I'm sure I have. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking mood. Um, yeah, if you actually want to hear Eliza's story of uh, having sex in an ice cream ch- truck, tune into the episode that is already out. Thank you so much for joining me so super randomly. Um, You're so welcome. Thank you for having me on the show. So randomly, but I loved it. Thank you Absolutely. so much to Eliza and obviously yourself for being here. Thank you so much at home for tuning in. Next week, I will be back same place, same time with who that it will be a mystery until next week. If you like this episode, I am sure you will love season one and two just as much. So head over to youtube.com slash by Ellen Moore to watch or listen to the Slut Show on your favorite podcast platform. If you want to support the Slut Show, you can head over to my Patreon page and buy me a coffee, which is only four euros a month. Um, yes. Follow- Sex Talk Saturdays and myself on Instagram at the Slut Show with Alan Moore. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you at home for tuning in. And for now, let's out. Let's out. Bye, guys. (laughs)